So in the last vlog, we kind of ended a little bit on a cliffhanger where I said that, hey, we, by the way, we have something we have to tell you guys, but I'll tell you in the next vlog. So I'm actually gonna insert all this footage at the very beginning of this vlog. So if you just stay tuned, you're going to watch the rest of the vlog. But we kind of just wanted to get this out and out of the way at the very beginning, just so you are aware. We kind of sort of have a little bit of unfortunate news that we have to discuss. So do you want to tell them what's going on? So I found out uh, last week that I'm kind of on a short notice that I'm going to be deploying pretty soon. That means that there's going to be uh, some changes, I guess, in the vlog. Obviously, I'm not going to be in it as much. <laughs> I won't be here, but I'll probably be in it as a, like a Skype video or something like that. Yeah, we can always like insert some footage from where you are too. Yeah. I know that a lot of you guys are new. You guys are, haven't been around for as long as when Blake deployed the last time. So basically how this is going to be switching things up just for security re reasons and for safety reasons, the typical Monday, Wednesday, Friday uploads are going to be changing, but they're going to be changing to be random. And that's purposefully done to kind of protect everything that goes along with being deployed, obviously. I think I think maybe the Friday vlog will go up as normal. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. I think the Friday vlog will go up as normal. However, I think from that point on, the uploads are going to be more sporadic and more random just so we protect the date when Blake will be literally like actually leaving. <laughs> also, what this means for you guys is obviously Blake is not going to be as much in the vlogs for just a little while. It's all temporary and the random upload schedule is going to be temporary as well. He'll be leaving in just a little bit. While he's gone, I'm going to be spending a lot of time with his mom up in Montana, which is really cool. I've never spent an extended period of time time up in Montana, so that should be really fun. And then I'm also going to be up in Seattle for a good portion of time as well to spend time with friends and family, and then also back in Las Vegas. So we're kind of gonna be bouncing around a little bit for the next couple months, which is, you know, fun and different. I'm actually kind of glad that I'm deploying now. If I didn't go now, I probably would have had a decent chance of deploying that like the same time that I did last time, which was like during, during the holidays and stuff. Yeah. yeah, because I'll be deploying sooner than that. I'll definitely be able to be here for the holidays and everything for mm -hmm. the most part. I mean, as far as I know, so that's kind of nice. That way I won't miss that or I won't miss uh, like Katie's birthday or something or or any of that stuff pretty much so yeah so basically even though the fact that he's deploying isn't like the most awesome thing in the world it's also like it could not have come at a better time we have so much going on toward the end of the year that he should be home for which is good we'll probably be candid about the fact that he's deploying in upcoming vlogs and obviously when he's gone it'll probably be a topic of conversation that will be in vlogs here and there but also we're not going to be giving away too much information about like where he's going when he's going when he's coming back all that stuff is going to be pretty what's the word like yeah, like under wraps a little bit, just just for you know safety's sake and everything like that. That being said, if you guys do have any questions, leave them in the comments down below or reach out to us on social media and we'll answer them as best we can. Speaking of social media, because the uploads are going to be a little bit more sporadic and a little bit more random starting I think next week, follow me on social media, follow me on Twitter and who's calling me right now? What was I saying? Something about social media. Oh, definitely follow me on Twitter and other social media listed in the description bar below if you haven't already, because that's probably where I'll be keeping you guys in the loop with what's going on as much as I can, obviously. I know it's kind of kind of a bummer. We're not we're not super psyched about this thing either. So let's just get right into the rest of the vlog. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I'm playing right now, Witcher 3, which has been out almost a year. I think it's been out almost a year. I had wanted it and I had the Witcher 2, the second one, but I never really like played it that much because the controls seemed kind of difficult for me. I just, I didn't want to take the time to have to learn it, which is really stupid, but I don't know if you can hear my computer. But it's like, th this game is pretty graphics intensive and like it looks amazing but it's making my 980 Ti heat up a lot. But it's, I mean, it's not, not not anything to worry about. It's just, I think this is the most graphics and graphics intensive game I've played since getting my 980 Ti. I haven't played a, too much of it. I've played maybe, maybe a couple hours. But yeah, if, uh, if anybody else has played it, let me know how you like it. Um, I've only, I've only heard good things about this game pretty much. It has a really, really high rating on a lot of different websites. Anyways, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep, 
keep playing some of this. Good morning, everybody. It is 10.30 in the morning, and you know what happened this morning? Something that never happens to us. <laughs> I have recently completely run out of both my mascara and my foundation. This is the first time that I have ever used a full thing of like $40 foundation completely up. There's like nothing left. I wanted to go to Ulta this morning to get a new foundation. And we left the house and we got there and it was closed. And we were like, wait, why is it closed? And it turns out it doesn't open until 11. We've been getting up so early lately that the day feels totally off. <laughs> Today we both got up around seven in the morning. Yeah. Feels pretty good though, huh? Yeah. I kind of like it. I like getting up early because then it feels like there's more time in the day. But the whole plan today was that I was going to get up and I was going to film a video. We've been having this issue where I'll do kind of like little things throughout the day and then by the time dinner time rolls around is when I start getting motivated to film. But then I have to get out all my lights and stuff because the sun is setting. So I was like, okay, today I'm going to get up. I'm gonna film first thing in the morning, so that way it's just done and out of the way and I can use the rest of the day to edit or whatever. So I was gonna film today, out of foundation, wanted to go get more foundation, drove all the way to Ulta to find out it was closed and isn't opening for another half an hour. So I don't know, it's just a funny thing, I guess. I have a foundation in mind that I wanna try. Before I was using the Makeup Forever HD foundation, which I liked, but I feel at the end of the day, it made me look kind of greasier than I actually was. So I'm gonna try something different. I'm going to try the Tarte Amazonian Clay Foundation, which I have heard really, really good things about. If it sucks, I can always just get a different foundation. If it doesn't suck, hey, at least then I've tried something new. All right, update. We just got out of Ulta and they are completely out of the color that I need. And the lady even called like the next nearest Ulta and they were completely out too. So it's like, mm, like I don't- a really common color. I don't know. I'm pretty, I'm pretty freaking white. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad I didn't get that one. You see? Yeah. That's... That was the color that I was like, maybe I'm this color, but then it wasn't. So I tried this color, which is a lot closer to my skin. Can you <laughs> see? This is not my color. This is my color, which I think is fair beige. Um, there, I don't even remember what this one was called. I think it was just fair ivory or something, but it was too yellow. Um, so fair beige had a little bit more pink in it, which doesn't even make that much sense considering the color is fair beige. Anyway, so I'm just gonna order it online and hope for the best, I guess. And in the meantime, squeeze out as much of the foundation I can out of my Makeup Forever HD foundation and hopefully make it work today. That is today's goal. to Death Valley. And every time we go somewhere and we vlog something that we maybe normally wouldn't, like traveling somewhere new, when I'm editing those vlogs, I like to kind of open up a Wikipedia page in another tab and kind of read about that place. So then when I'm editing, if there's anything that is extra interesting, I can kind of insert some of that knowledge into the vlog. So for example, something cool that I was reading about when it comes to Death Valley while I was editing, and we discussed it a little bit in that vlog that it is the lowest point in North America, but but something else kind of cool. Death Valley's Badwater Basin is the point of the lowest elevation in North America at 282 feet below sea level. This point is 84.6 miles east-southeast of Mount Whitney, the highest point in the contiguous United States with an elevation of 14,505 feet. So that's really cool because you have the lowest point in all of North America basically right next to the highest point in all of the United States, only like under a hundred miles away from each other, which is just unbelievable. But that's actually not the point I was trying to make. <laughs> Oftentimes I will fall into a Wikipedia wormhole. Does anybody else do this? It's something that I do almost every single night before I fall asleep. I will go on my phone and I will read Wikipedia. <laughs> a lot of the articles are really boring and they're really great for falling asleep, but then at the same time, a lot of these articles are really interesting and I learn so much about literally anything just by reading Wikipedia every single night before I go to bed. When I was reading about Death Valley, because it's the lowest point in North America and it's the hottest place in the world with the highest recorded air temperature of 134 degrees Fahrenheit, this is contested by the way, because Death Valley has kind of extreme points to it, this linked me to this article. The extreme points on Earth. I'm not even joking, this is probably one of my favorite all-time articles on Wikipedia because it links to so many interesting extreme points on the Earth. 
But I'm going to tell you about one extreme point that kind of blew my mind a little bit. When you go to the extreme points Wikipedia, this is the one that I was most interested in. The most remote archipelago and the most remote inhabited island is Tristan da Cahuna. So obviously I had to open this up in a new page. Colloquially known as Tristan is both a remote group of volcanic islands in the South Atlantic Ocean and the main island of that group. It is the most remote inhabited archipelago in the world, lying 1,200 miles from the nearest inhabited land, St. Helena, and 1,500 miles from the nearest continental land, South Africa. The island has a population of 267 as of January 2016. I know you guys didn't ask to learn about Tristan today, but I'm gonna tell you about Tristan today anyway. <laughs> because A, it's really interesting stuff, and B, now you can be like, hey, I learned something today. Katie taught me about Tristan de Cahuna, the most remote inhabited archipelago in the world. <laughs> no, but for real, there were a couple things that stood out to me about Tristan that I just wanted to share with you. For example, their economy, the island's unique social and economic organization has evolved over the years, but is based on the principles set out by William Glass in 1817. All Tristan families are farmers. The land is all communally owned. All households have a plot of land where they grow potatoes. Livestock numbers are strictly controlled to conserve pasture and to prevent better off families from accumulating wealth. Unless it votes for a change in its law, no outsiders are allowed to buy land or settle on Tristan. For transport, the remote location of the islands makes transport to the outside world difficult. There's no airport. <laughs> the islands can only be reached by the sea. Fishing boats from South Africa service the islands eight or nine times a year. So basically, if you wanna go visit, you have to go by the sea. And also, there's no internet. <laughs> from 1998 to 2006, internet was available, but its high cost made it almost unaffordable for the local population who primarily used it only to send email. The connection was also extremely unreliable, connecting through a 64 kilobit satellite phone connection provided by Inmarsat. Yeah, that's so crazy. And the last really cool thing I was learning about this Wikipedia is there's only 200 some odd people that live there, but everybody on the island is thought to have descended from 15 ancestors, eight males and seven females, who arrived on the island at various times between 1816 and 1908. So the entire island shares only eight surnames. Glass, Green, Hagen, Lavarello, Patterson, Repetto, Rogers, and Swain. Yeah, I don't know. I just thought this was super interesting and I wanted to share it with you. <laughs> Alrighty guys, it is time to end the vlog. I'm sorry for kind of the sad announcement that we made at the beginning of this vlog, but unfortunately it's just something we have to deal with. For today's question of the day, have you ever fallen into a Wikipedia wormhole where you're reading about something, you find another thing that looks interesting, so you click on it and you fall into another article, you find something else interesting, you click on that article and it just goes on and on and on and on. Wikipedia wormholes are a thing. <laughs> and what are your favorite things to research? Whether it be from Wikipedia or a totally different I don't know, just through Google, I don't even know. What is something that you're super interested in that you love researching when you're in the right mood? Let us know in the comments down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. If you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already because we put out videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Even though that will be changing here pretty shortly to be a little bit more random, Friday's vlog is still a thing. So, I hope you guys enjoyed and we will see you on Friday. Bye. Casual February 20. I know, casual February 27th temperature in a Using my Death Valley, in California. Here. What? Using my window as a mirror. Oh, really? That's, <laughs> that's a compliment. Yeah. We're on our way to Badwater Basin at the moment. The lowest point in North America. The flowers are getting really, really pretty. So I thought we would pull over and so I could